Lo paré más de I'm keep, hey, I'm keeping that on there too, but that's staying in the live, man. Y'all go check out KD LaFleur, man. We waiting on these folks to get up into the live, man. Y'all go check bro out, man. Exclusive. I love you showing this fame off my name. That was real. <laughs> Razor Stu, what's the word, bro? Appreciate you for tuning in. I'm going to spit that shit one more time so you so they can feel the nigga, dog. They got to feel Yeah, them. run that back, bro. I got, who did that beat? <laughs> who did that beat, bro? Oh, you talking about... Right here? Yeah. My boy, my boy Cook. My boy Cook called me today. He said, man, you working with Cino, but I got to come 10 times on. <laughs> but real talk, though, I'm about to do this shit back. Mama text me saying, son, something, something got to shake. I ain't got no insurance in the rent late. You better watch soak our friend because they really snakes. You better go and get some money on this paper chase. Little sis balling hard to best in the state. Matter of fact, she gon' make it to the NBA. She want the nails done, send the nails by the eight. It really hurt to hear a roach in that chain game. All you got is yourself, no room for mistakes. On the come up like Max Styles, I feel you, babe. All that love you showing this name off my name. Damn, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep right, man. Bro, tune into the live, bro. Tap in. Uh -huh. Tune into the live, bro. We live right now. Into it. Yeah, man, we got got a special guest dropping game, man. All right, see you All right, Femo. Yeah. Yeah, but y'all check out, bro, man. That's KD LaFleur. Y'all check bro out, man. All right, man, so we got, got a real special live for y'all tonight. We're going to be dropping a lot of gems, a lot of game, but uh, we ain't going to wait too much longer for the folks to get in here, so they're going to have to catch the vapors. Every time they update it, they make making stuff more difficult. Cool. What's up, what up, bro? What's cracking? Man, not too much, not too much ready to drop these gems, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's the KD? They already, they already pouring in. Let's get it. That's what I'm talking about. What up, Weirdo League? What up, Divide? What up, Juan? We really going to be touching on a few different topics tonight, man. Um, it's going to go by fast, but just before we hop, hop into it, the two topics that we're really touching on tonight is engagement and building a, a fan base. Engagement and building a fan base. I want to start off with the fan base because I feel like that kind of goes into engagement and um and then this this theory that I've been I've been hearing Gypsy Hustle talk about called the elevator versus stairs. Right on, bro. A lot of artists appreciate that, bro. For real. And we both from the Lou, so you know it's only right. Taurus, two Taurus yeah, from St. Louis, so it's only right. Two Taurus is from St. Louis. What are the odds? <laughs> uh, I think it's real important for like artists nowadays and the culture we in to really think about: Are you taking the elevators, or <laughs> I got to have to do that? <laughs> Don't are you, break. <laughs> are you taking the elevators or the stairs? So um, we're going to touch on that, man. So we're going to go ahead and get our special guest in here. And, uh, EDO cool. Music. All right, cool. He here? Yeah, he here. All right, what up, brand man? I'll holler at you, bro. Let's get it. Brand yeah. man, what's going on, bro? Appreciate can you hear me cool? Yeah, I can hear you. Bet, bet. Appreciate you for tapping in with us, man. What's up? What happened to Cool? Uh, he, I don't think they'll let three people be in here. 
I didn't think so. Yeah, okay. I don't think that led three, but he's still in here, man. So, um, so basically, y'all, like I said, man, today we're touching on the elevator versus stairs, uh, fan engagement, and <laughs> building an authentic fan base. So, um, okay. we got a couple of questions that's already put into the poll that I can bring up later. So, we're going to save some of those for the end. If any of the artists that's in here right now have questions, y'all can just literally just drop them in here and we'll get to them. But before we do, I just want you to let people know that may not be familiar with you, like, who you are, what you do, where they can tap in with you at. Okay. My name is uh, Brand Man Sean. You can find me pretty much anything. Brand, B-R-A-N-D, man, S-E-A-N, Sean. Um, I got a YouTube page. Basically, I'm, I'm a marketer, man. I market. Uh, not just music, but mar music definitely an area that I, I work within. I give a lot of advice within. I got uh, my YouTube page. has like over 50,000 subscribers or as close to it at this point. All I do really all day just figure out how to give people value when we think about my online presence. So I like to stick with that. I, I don't get too deep into uh, too many other services. We can talk about that stuff later. You can hit me up at Brand Man Sean if you want to talk about something like that. But yeah, it's just about giving value, man. So you'll get fed for who I am. Y'all go subscribe to, to my man's channel. And he's dropping yeah. a, yeah. a lot of game on there, man. Like a lot, yeah, a lot sure. of games and game on his YouTube channel, y'all. So please go tap in with him <laughs> and check him out. But um, yeah, I think y'all will get a feel for who I am by how I answer questions, and we can leave it at that. Yes, sir. So uh, let's let's start out with this elevator versus stairs theory. Um, like I yeah. said, Nipsey Hussle, in a lot of his interviews, he talks about taking the stairs versus the elevator. And obviously, you know, you can kind of see when you take the elevator, you're going to get to your destination quicker. When you take the stairs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little longer, but you're right. doing more work to get there. You know, you did a leg exercise when you took the stairs. So um, I want to really kind of just get your take on, like, some of the differences between that and how – an artist can really decide which way is best for them because everything is, you know, every everything don't work for everybody. Some artists may be able to just go, go viral and really take that and propel it. So what do you feel like is the difference between those two? And then what are some, like, strategies within both that artists can, producers, whoever can take advantage of? All right, so the difference between the elevator versus the stairs, right? Yeah, within strategy for artists. So when you think about the elevator, that's a lot more traditional, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really dependent on connections. A lot of that stuff is preparing yourself to be attractive to a label. Mm -hmm. And just by nature, the two things, trying to prepare yourself to be sold to a label is still slightly different than just focusing strictly on a, on a fan base. Mm -hmm. Right? It's kind of like B to C, B to B. Now, labels are in a, in a position where they look at people who have fans, right? We all know that. that mm -hmm. Like, they don't want you to have no fans at all. They're trying to accelerate, not create your fan base, right? But at the, uh, at the same point, because you'll have to be moving throughout the industry, right? Mm -hmm. When we think about it, um, being on the elevator, trying to get into the industry, trying to get signed to a label of some sort, a lot of that's going to mean you need a, a lot of these industry things you might move with, within. You got to be at some of those events or a lot, or a lot of these collaborations. You got to try to work within that system because essentially, when we think about taking the stairs, that's building your own business for yourself for you to be sustainable and to keep moving out of. It's its own entity that can move and sustain itself. Mm -hmm. Now, you put your, you you can always join into the elevator situation, mm -hmm. like halfway. But I would always say, if you want to, if you want to get on a label, right? No matter what, you should still be acting like you're taking the stairs. Mm -hmm. Because if you build to take the stairs, you can always join with a label halfway. You can say, oh, well, you know what? I need to just go ahead and try to make this label thing happen because some things popped up. I need some money faster than I thought I needed, or I got this big old fan base or some situation, and I don't know exactly what to do with it. Let me go to a label. And you'll probably be in a position where you're attractive to the label. And the stairs if you, give you that leverage. The stairs give you the leverage to be able to go to the That's where leverage comes from, right? And you'll be in a better position with that. But these days, if you try to go for a label situation and a label situation don't work out at the day, like now you're still starting back from ground zero. So you might as well take the stairs and then hop on. You know, it's just like real life, right? You go to the second level. It's still an elevator on the second level. You can still take an elevator to the 10th level if you want to. 
you get to the fifth level, you can still take an elevator, but just take the stairs until the elevator makes sense for you. Got you. Now, I've seen, like, just in what I've been watching and observing from the game. Hey, you I'm super low, man. I can't hear you. I said, from what I've been observing and seeing, you can hear me? I don't hear you, bro. You know how to fix this. Hold on. You can't hear me right now? You super low. All right. Hold up real quick. I'm going to try something. Hold up. All right. Can you hear me now, bro? I hear you better. All right. Um, if, if you if you can't hear me, let me know. But basically, some of the things that I've observed from the game right now have been, like, these memes. Like, basically, blue Blueface basically blew up off memes. Like, straight, straight, basically, people making fun of him. But that's literally what really got him hot and got him buzzing it. I mean, as we can all see... He's he's making money right now. He is he is all oh, he has a real fan base, even though he originally kind of came in off of a a viral type of situation. But like memes, um, going viral, um, having a cosign, I, you know, sometimes that does work for people, and um, and of course like a breakout single, just one song that just shoots through the moon and it like instantly basically puts you on. So. I've seen all of those work for some, not work for others. But what out of all of those memes, the single, just going viral, a cosign, or even like controversy, what do you feel like is the 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 best elevator strategy that actually you can make stick after you get that initial momentum off of it? The best elevator strategy after you get the momentum from those things you just named? No, I'm saying like which of the elevator strategies can can they make stick after the fact? Because you know some people get on real quick, but they also be gone the next year. You don't hear of them after a year after they go viral. So like out of all of these quote unquote elevator elevator strategies, do you think that any of them can be uh, capitalized on after the fact, so where it does stick and you can't actually have longevity, even though you came in off of a elevator strategy? Right. Okay, so when you think about elevator, you think about the viral situations. I don't necessarily think about things that take you viral being elevator. Mm -hmm. Really, that's just straight up marketing, building awareness. Right, you can always go viral at some point. The problem is with what you're talking about is people are using these strategies before they even have a decent fan base or some shit figured out already. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about going from zero, use this strategy to something versus you know, having a little bit, you might have only 500 fans, but just some kind of system in place that you understand and then using it is a different story, right? Mm -hmm. But out of all those strategies, I think it's a lot less about which strategy you use. It's about what you're bringing people into. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any problem with it, whether you use memes, whether you got um, whether you got some controversy going on, things like that. But it only becomes a problem when you distract when you when it becomes a distraction from what your actual brand is and people are thinking about you for things that aren't what you want to represent and hold them with in a long term that makes sense yeah absolutely now for let's switch gears real quick and get into like building a fan base because i've seen uh, um we have a, a few questions already asked regarding that um defend a day strategy how can artists like systematically put put that into you? Because it sounds real easy. It sounds really simple. You know, if I just DM DM a person today and send them my music, you know, I get a fan today, but it don't work like that. And I know you being a marketer, you understand the whole concept of a funnel and the fact that right. all, the people that you, all the people you go after are not going to stay. But if you go after enough people, a certain number of those people or percentage of people will stay. So what's like the most, you know, down to earth, um, bootstrap strategy that that some artists can use to just get a fan a day. Because even if you get one fan a day at the end of the year, you can monetize 300 different people. M multiplying anything by 365, you'll get a good a good you know comeback off of that. So what do you feel is a good way to actually get a fan a day? Right. <clears throat> so that bootstrap strategies, when I think about bootstrap strategies, you got one that whole liking people and having conversations on Instagram, that yeah. actually works, but it's hard. But we're talking about bootstrap strategies. If you got time, it does work. I promise you it does work. I I prefer people to say I'm going to dedicate two hours a day to it for mm -hmm. six months versus 
like go in for like five hours at a time for only a week and then drop off. Like do it. Don't be focused heavily on the immediate results and then just look back after six months. That's one route. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, there's a lot of these pages that allow you to pay for placements and things like that, right? Especially if you're at zero, you got to get in front of somebody, mm -hmm. get posted on these pages, but you need to save up money because the reality is, yes, you can do some bootstrapping, but mm -hmm. without connections, there's just going to be some level of money that you have to spend. Always. Like, I'm not even going to say start off with Facebook ads. Like I, I say start off on some pages where you believe they have a similar audience to what you, um, what, from what you identify with, whether that's the rap page, whether that's some girl's beauty page because you'll speak to females or whatever, whatever that is, go ahead and start saving up, try to pay for some placements on those because that's one going to give you that immediate feedback. You'll start seeing if people say, oh, this is trash. Oh, this is trash. Oh, this is actually kind of dope. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to get that feedback on if people actually are rocking with you when it's from a third party perspective and not me asking you, do I like you? Are you like my music? Or me asking my friends if they like my music. That's a lot. It's that's biased. a problem. It's biased. It's, above. it's biased no matter what. Like that, that's why I don't really like when people ask me, do I like their music or not? Because for one, it's not going to matter. I'm probably not going to be a target demographic. And two, we're having a one on one conversation. Either I'm going to tell you trash, but I can't, I'm not going to spend the time to tell you how to change it. Or I'm going to tell you it's cool, but whether it's resonating with me deeply or not doesn't mean it's good or bad. I might just be the wrong person. Mm -hmm. So really, I, I would start off with just saving money, being patient, saving my money, working, whether that at McDonald's, Pizza Hut, maybe I got a corporate job, whatever that is, mm -hmm. but save from whatever level you can and start to invest in getting my stuff placed in a few third parties. And once you get a chance to see that, all right, this is something worth um, doing. Like, they like this particular song. Maybe they didn't like your last three songs you got posted, but they like this song. Mm -hmm. Then figure out, how do I double down from here and build some systems around getting that to more and more people? And that would be playlisting, because that's the other route, right? Because why? That's third parties. That can get expensive, because a lot of these guys that have, you know, uh, actual authentic following on a playlist, um they they are taxing they are charging three hundred dollars to post it and they're not even they're not even permanently leaving it in there they're charging you three hundred dollars to just to have your song in there for a week yes and then if you wanted to be if you wanted to be in the top like the top ten songs in the play then they're gonna charge you an extra hundred dollars on yep. top so i mean have you seen it where it's like have you seen some reasonable um, strategies on getting authentic playlist uh, placements without really like breaking a bank because I've you know a lot of people buying their followers and buying their plays on the playlist yeah. too. Yeah, you got to reach out to some of these people. You have to vet if you can, but that's that's a hard game. There's a lot of inauthentic playlists, and then there's just so many playlists where they you built it with legitimate followers, but you didn't stay active because it's hard. It's a thing. So then those people who were legitimate when they were following you, they're not checking for your playlist anymore. You created playlists yourself on probably YouTube that you don't haven't looked at in a year or so. You know what I mean? So it's not even always a scam thing. The best thing you can do is try to find a few individuals that like they try to do that regularly for artists, but they're on the come up. So they're still doing it for a relatively low price. You're not going to get on the official Spotify playlist just like that. Right. You're not going to get the big inflow. You're not going to pay eighty five thousand dollars to get posted on a Kylie Jenner's Snapchat like some of these artists <laughs> have done. You know, like, yeah, but you can spend the time, reach out. I've seen somebody get a hundred plus thousand plays off of Spotify just mm -hmm. from doing a hell of a lot of playlists like outreach. Now it's crowded, though. They were doing that. Yeah, this is like 2000, probably 16, 17, 17. It was 2000, like 17 ish. Yeah. So the mentality was different. Now, a lot of people are on to playlisting, but it's still a relevant thing if you can get on the proper ones. And that game is so ongoing. I can't say like I can't I can't tell you like which ones are going to be the best ones tomorrow, which ones are the best one today, unless that's literally my full-time thing. That's not my full-time thing at yeah. this time.
Well, I know, you know, one thing that y'all can do just to like, you know, like you said, bootstrap it, but still be able to get some of this outreach, keep it organized, but start everybody with a Mac computer or really everybody computer usually comes with like a version of Excel. Yeah. The Excel proof of Microsoft, man. No, what are you talking about? Excel. <laughs> they got the version of it on MacBook. Like, keep yeah. the information organized. When y'all, I've worked at a music marketing company where that's this literally all he did all day was was basically make a spreadsheet and harass people. I mean, real talk. Like, so yeah. keep it keep it organized. Their name, the uh, link to their page, how much they charge. Keep all of that information. And even if, like you said, just doing an hour a day. If you do that for a month, you'll probably have at least 100 to 200 different curators in your spreadsheet. But you got to keep the information organized because it's way too easy to, for it to get lost in the sauce. If you just trust you your DM, it so do yeah. exactly what you just said. You can also use a site like Chartmetrics so you can get access to a lot of those um just all that, all those people information, a lot of Spotify playlists is information. Chart metrics, chart metrics, try it out. $50, I think, is probably the monthly price right now. You go in, you get as much as you can, and then maybe if you can't pay, pay 50 the next month, it is what it is. But keep that stuff organized. You reach out to somebody, you keep, you, you write a date when you reached out to them, and then, you know, you follow up next month, reach out to them again if it's with a new track. Something like that, but you keep going down the list, going down the list, going down the list, and that has to be a process. It's a process. Calvin Corey said, harass people, laugh my ass. But, like, for real, like, and even on Sharp Metric, they'll tag multiple of So, if somebody on Sharp Metric, a curator, has a Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, where they'll put all of those things on the Sharp Metric. So, if you don't have That's to spend. Right. So you don't have to spend as much time going to find all the different pages because one person might not answer on Facebook when you message them. One person, <laughs> exactly. somebody else might Snapchat. Most people reply to Snapchat messages the quickest, honestly. Snapchat is where I've gotten the quickest responses from curators, honestly, because Snapchat is more of an everyday thing for people. And, and it's not as popular right now as well. So the activity is less. You don't have as many messages right now. Instagram, you gonna have, they gonna have a thousand messages on their DM on Instagram. Stuff is flooded on Instagram, like and and to that harass people comment though, like it's not, it doesn't have to be harassing people. It's called pleasant, persistent. If yeah. you have the wrong attitude about it, like you can hit people up. You don't have to be like, hey, check out my song. That's the problem. People spam people, and the difference between spam and pleasant persistence is actually being inconsiderate of somebody's time, right? Treating them yeah. like a human. Oh. I double like most messages. Most people need multiple follow ups just to get some response. So I hit I hit the person up. Okay, bam, they haven't responded. They might have actually seen it. They might have seen. They might have clicked it and then didn't get a chance to answer it. They might have just seen it, but still like we're busy doing whatever we do. Three yeah, days I'm, later, I have to say be like be an asshole. I mean, be respectful. There's a you have to have tact when you have want anybody to do something for hey, you. Have to when you talk to these people. A week, bro. A week later. Yo, um, I know you're probably super busy. I just wanted to know if you got a chance to check out my email yet, right? Mm -hmm. Respectful as hell. Maybe some more times passes. You know, just double them back. Don't want to be ruined. Don't want to be pushy or spammy. Bam. Mm -hmm. I gotta do that, that's as respectful as it gets. You have to push a little bit, but you still can have a respectful tone. And we know tone is everything. I can say yes, ma'am, to you. And I could, or yes, sir. And the yes, sir could be like, oh, it's all about respect. Or I could have an attitude and I say, yes, sir. And it's the tone changes everything. And that's what people get. And that's how people mess up when they send their messages. Um, but like, so I understand the bootstrap stuff. But at the end of the day, too, that don't, don't get, sometimes artists with the bootstrapping becomes a get with quick rich get rich quick type scheme yeah. in terms of like you think you're trying to get everything for just a low where sometimes it's better to just be patient save up what you can have a true strategy of true like a connection here or there and when i say connections i don't mean some mystical music industry connections i just mean maybe you know this influencer who's helpful to you or, or y'all have built a relationship whatever whatever your personal stuff is mm -hmm. but that because Let's break this down. You talked about blue faith earlier, right? Uh -huh. First of all, memeing is more than just I create a meme in myself or I create four memes and I just get them posted. It's a uh, intensive strategy that takes months. Like we blue Blake, blue face got a million followers in two months, but that was off of a foundation what's been building since like last April, right? Mm -hmm. 
if you look at Blueface's post last year, he had like two posted on his actual page, but he had maybe seven videos posted on World Star, six maybe, and then and then one on Lyrical uh, Lemonade. Post wise, based on their general prices, that's at least fifty k. Mm -hmm. And what, post. It, it, that's fun because it's like you might only like you said he only had two originally, but once people like get onto it, like with the uh, what's the movie that just came out that everybody's naming. Bird Box, they might have only, I'm pretty sure, I'm very, very confident that they actually had that as a strategy for that movie. And they might have only made 10 or 20 to start out. But then as they saw that, more people got onto it. Like when I was working for for the music marketing company, the guy that, that ran it, his name is Cody Patrick. If y'all anybody in Atlanta, y'all can check out his company. It's called Organic Music Marketing. He always said there there's honestly almost no such thing as organic marketing when you get to a big enough level like all these labels and these big artists like beyonce even has fake followers drake has fake followers but yeah. it, but it, what it's called is, or at least from his perspective i'm not saying this how i feel but from his perspective he would say you create that foundation and that structure of you actually pushing it to people and so that natural organic word of mouth starts to spread you yourself have to start it though and then people would oh yeah back to there, the yeah people were right. making their own memes if you just push a couple hard enough that's all it's about you have to like i i, I tell people that all the time like market marketing is artificial by nature because if you plan to do it that means you created it right this is a snowball effect right but you have to create the snowball for the shit to start rolling and push it downhill before it start getting bigger so all that additional stuff that collects and makes it big, that's the organic stuff. But what you did initially to get it going, that's the that's the marketing. The whole thing is to be able to create something that will build organically, but you got to make that push happen. This is when the branding comes into play. This is when putting more attention to your music videos mm -hmm. really comes into play because it's really a product thing. Like when I built my music festival, it was about Let's create an event that's going that's about the event and people will spread the word about the event itself. So it's marketing to have certain artists there in the community. It's marketing to have certain things exist just to bring people in the first time, but mm -hmm. then next time triple in attendance because the event itself was so dope, people fucked with it, they're gonna spread those words after they get the experience, right? They're gonna tell their friend, they gonna tell that girl if she didn't come with them. Like they're gonna tell their homie, like, hey bro, I just went to this event and it was dope. Or right, I just, exactly. I, it is, it, me personally, as a music fan, anytime that I've heard a super duper dope artist, I've always told somebody else about them. Every time, it does not fail. That's what it's about. And people spend too much money on their on their videos and too little thought. Like if you think about Jordan, Jordan Lucas is I'm not racist, right? Mm. Think about that room. It's a room, simple. basically two people's two phases. Super simple. Mm -hmm. Went viral. Why? Because just the small framework of what it was going to be about creatively, how we position it. We're going to use the white man's face for the thumbnail. The title's going to say I'm not racist. And people are going to think this white man's just being racist. Because most people don't even know about joining Lucas right at this point. And then, you know, we're going to switch it up. That small little concept. Tyler, the creator. A little bit shock value how he you know blew up with yonkers guy sitting in on a chair white background and then he has a cockroach coming up his arm or whatever right and it's a black guy we haven't really seen nothing like that yeah. it's small great shock value yeah it's it's small thing the the the, the video i um i reference this video often mm -hmm. whenever i think about it it's a video called I think it's called Go by OK Go. Whatever it is, just type OK Go. Anybody who listen and when they get the chance to check it out. But it's a, a band, probably like six white guys. Mm -hmm. They're just on treadmills and they're dancing on treadmills. And they do this one one shot video where they have this whole choreographed dance routine on the treadmills. And at that time, like they were like the first ones to do anything like that, especially with visibility on scale. And mm -hmm. so it was just cool. It was a cool, interesting thing. If you see the video, like it's but it's a basic concept. We get six treadmills together. You probably probably ask somebody 
he can we borrow their gym? You know, frame. Pay him probably. Bring them together after hours and then shoot the video one shot. It's simple. Even even though it was technically expensive in the things that got used, Lil Dicky say that money. That was a concept, right? And I'm gonna try to create a video and I'm gonna promote the narrative that it was about saving money and that I did all this stuff without paying for it. Even if he didn't get the mansions and the nice stuff he did get in it, the fact that he promoted the narrative creatively of I'm doing all this stuff without spending money and saving money is still uh, is additional stuff that creates conversation. So that's why I say people just spend too much money on the videos and get high quality HD. That's not impressive to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about like the concept itself, what happens within it that's going to be worth talking about. Even if that's it's so trash that it's hilarious, mm -hmm. right? Because we a lot of trash goes viral, but it has to be something worth talking about. And being good is not something I want to talk about. I see good shit all the time. Yeah. All right. Let me switch gears real quick to another strategy that I've seen is coming more popular by bigger artists that I'm I'm just now putting so and so together that this is actually a a strategy. Fan pages. Um, I'm seeing a lot of bigger yeah. artists now have, a th like you said, third party pages that are completely dedicated to, you know, this is a fan page. NBA Youngboy got one, uh, Kodak got one, Kevin Gates has one. And I've noticed that the actual artists are very, very, they're engaging highly with these pages. So I'm like, I don't think this is just a coincidence. I'm starting to think that people are actually using fan pages as a way to make themselves kind of appear bigger because like you said in a video one time yo in my opinion i don't know if you said which one is better but in my opinion indirect marketing or third-party marketing is always a little bit more persuasive because if i always use this example if somebody come up to me on the street and say hey bro here's my cd i'm the hottest thing bro i'm the hottest nigga out of the city anybody would say that whether they or they actually are the hottest in their city but everybody's going to tell you as an artist that they're dope Nobody's going to come up to you and tell you, hey, here's my CD. I'm all right, but here's my CD. Because you're not going to want to listen to it. So if, but if somebody else comes up to you and says, hey, this not even me, but this is, a per this is the hottest person in the city, you might be a little bit more likely to be like, well, dang, if he has a whole other person that's out, like a foot soldier that's promoting for him, he got to be worth something. Because he was, he's, his music is good enough for him to have a, a third party person promoting for him. So you think yeah. that fan page is something that an uh, underground artist could take advantage of to like get they to get that that base up and kind of get that perception that they have that third party? Um, you know, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's a strategy. Like most, that's what a lot of these people are doing. Mm -hmm. Like you, they build fan pages and then some true. Let's all right, back to the artificial and organic mar marketer. Some of these people are building fan pages, the very first fan, fan page, because nobody else is even a fan enough to create one at that time. And then they blow themselves up. And when they get to a certain point, they get rid of their fan page that mm -hmm. they created. That's what I've even seen. I've noticed as well. And But then, of course, there'll be some f real fan pages that still exist. And then there's some other ones that are smart where... Because you can't, every it's not a cookie cutter. Of course, you know that. There's yeah. people that literally, they a fan legitimately built up a fan page, but then if you're smart, you say, dang, that shit is so value to, valuable to me. I'm going to go interact with them and get a good relationship and make this fan stay loving me because they're doing all this shit and I'm not even spending no money for it. Yeah. So why would I not engage? So the, there's some smart people who are doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, getting outside of their ego and real and humbling themselves and realize how important and valuable that is. But there's a lot of people building up their first fan pages to help build that. Um, from an indie artist, if you're not going to have some of this additional stuff like the uh -huh. money and the placements and things like that, mm -hmm. you once again be creative in how you think about how you leverage the fan page. Don't just lazily say, "Oh, that means anything I." I, I drop. I need to just post it here too, mm -hmm. right? So now you, your fan page is damn near a replica of your main page. No, right? they have exclusive. They'll have pictures that aren't on the main artist's page, like exclusive. Pictures. Oh no, I'm talking about to indie artists right now oh, listening. I, yeah. You want to do this, right? No, that that that's how they do it. I, I get it. I'm just saying, like, if you're listening and thinking, how do I apply this myself? Yeah, it's not a lazy photocopy of your main page. Yeah, you have to create new content, create 
a lot of stuff that isn't on your page. And you act like you damn near don't know it exists. Like, that's that's just really what it is. Or find some 16-year-old who's in high school probably does fan, uh, meme pages or something themselves or probably, you know, you can pay them for the low and then let them create it, right? Like, Got you, got you. All right, so now on to the engagement. We kind of have touched on it a little bit, but um, what, like, because I've heard, and this goes to my main point, even with the engagement, like, I feel like a lot of artists, like, y'all have to start thinking like marketers. Y'all got, even though that might not be your area of expertise, I've, I've noticed that a lot of the more successful independent artists always have dropped some type of gem related to, like, how they, marketed branding themselves so it's like even if you just do the bare minimum of going on to youtube and looking up some of the guys on there that are dropping marketing games like you but not even just for artists i mean like business you ever heard of ty lopez or billy yeah, Jean sure. or alex becker all these guys are marketers in the more kind of business realm but they're dropping real value that is not being utilized by artists at all just do the bare yep. minimum, man. Just go on YouTube and look up marketing videos, and I promise you, you'll find some information that most artists don't know. Um, There's plenty of shit like that out there, man. Like, Gary V has been a blessing and a curse to some of these artists just because a lot of people think they know now that they hear some concepts and they can repeat them and reg regurgitate them, but mm -hmm. they don't understand why, right? Like, oh, just do this, just do this, but they don't really understand the why to it or the actual work ethic and grind that goes behind it. Mm -hmm. But definitely go take in that information, but you have to be willing to experiment and go through the process because there's definitely a shift in the industry. Artists used to have to be salespeople mm -hmm. because they were trying to find a record label, an a and R, right? Uh, an exec, somebody like that to sell themselves to, and then hopefully they put them on, blah, blah, blah. Now they have to be marketing people because they need to get other people to talk to them, talk about them, create conversation about them. Because those marketing people, like you said, they're going to be those third parties speaking for you, make you to make you look big, and that's where your reputation precedes you. That's why like, I'm not a salesperson. I know how to market my ass, so, but mm -hmm. when but when you market, it makes sales easy because people already have a perception of you when they come in, right? And mm -hmm. that's what art that's what artists need to do for themselves, whether that's for a, a fan. Right, the fan already believes because CJ said, "Hey, this shit is dope." The fan already believes this is gonna be dope, or the uh, a record label because right? the record label has heard, "Oh man, they already got a following," or they see that you have a following, so they already gonna have a perception of what you can do. But it's not it's nothing new. Like when I have family members, like in, in Mississippi or whatever, they'll come back from college and stuff like that and be like, yo, bro, bro this song, this little Boosie song, like before people like Lil Boosie and all them came over here, it was like, oh, bro, like, we'll, this will be on in the party and it'll be so wild when they play this drunk song. In my head, my little kid brain, I'm just imagining like this dope party to this song. So they already created a picture of how dope it is. Now I like the song because it makes me feel like this image that they uh, painted, right? And it makes me feel connected in a way. It's the same stuff. Now we just got to do it instead of one to one. It's one to many. That's what artists are focused on. As long on. as you can deliver so, on that recommendation, you pretty much then gain the new fan. As long as you can you deliver again, bro. off of that hype that somebody's willing to give you as a third party, like it's up to you to to close the sale, so to speak. Like as long as you can deliver after somebody tells you that tells somebody that you're dope and they go check you out. If you really dope, that person's probably gonna follow you at that point. And you have basically gained a new fan as long as you can deliver the thing. Like I've seen, you know, businesses, for example, be mad when, you know, some marketing person does something for them that doesn't work. But it's like, well, maybe the marketing was good, but your product itself or your service itself, once they came to your business, was not good. So they never came back. So as long as like, I think, every, you know, simple, sometimes we over romanticize the, the concept of marketing. And a lot of times it does, sometimes it does just go back to it's having, just having good music, being as simple as just having good music. So like you said, if you do go viral or you do get some type of break that brings the attention to your music, you can actually have the infrastructure there so where you can capture those people. And it's not a distraction, so to speak. But you got to have something there already built so that when you attract that new audience, they'll actually stay.
As long as that infrastructure is built, you got a path of a, a trail of dead bodies, so to speak. You feel me? You already got five dope mixtapes, but now you're marketing yourself. When I go find you as a new artist, I'm like, oh, this nigga got five mixtapes, and they all hard. I'm really a fan now. But yep. But that's just the um. You know, like I said, man, think just do the bare minimum and start. You know, start doing a little bit of research on marketing from a business perspective. Because even as a as a musician, you're not selling the music, so to speak. Like hand to hand, a lot of people are not doing the masterpiece strategy anymore. But you should still think of yourself as a business, and at the end of the day, your product is your music. So you got to think of yourself yeah. as a business owner, even if you just even if you're an artist, you think of yourself as a business, and this is my product. And I think a lot of people will be able to kind of leverage more just thinking like a marketer. Definitely, definitely. I mean, that's, that's the way things are going. Everybody pretty much has to think like a marketer and in, in their own way these days. I'm, I'm seeing that um verbal. What's this? Verbal artiste music. He asks, "Do you guys think that artists posting reactions to music videos and current events is great content for your discovery funnel, Absolutely. or is it more of a distraction Absolutely. and hard to convert?" I, in my personal opinion, absolutely. Um, I've, I mean, there's a guy named uh, named DJ Ghost on YouTube. He's a reaction guy, but he's almost at a million. And at the end of the day, if he does a post, I mean, if he does a reaction to your video, it's, it's going to get probably six figures worth of of views on it. So I think reactions are, are dope. Um, I think it also kind of gives you that opportunity to leverage the trust that an audience has with that curator to where if they say, if they react to the song and say it's dope, now they trust, well, I like this YouTuber. So if he say you dope, you dope, basically. Okay. Well, hey, well my opinion is, like my opinion is it works. Mm -hmm. It does have its value. Um, it just can't overcome or overtake your, your regular brand. All right? Because at the end of the day, it's a part of the funnel. It's a piece of content. You reacting to somebody's music, what, what difference is that? Then somebody doing a Breakfast Club interview, if somebody discovers you through a Breakfast Club interview, and they're like, oh, I like the way this guy speaks. Like, there's a reason that artists go to these places to do these interviews or people will do some of these quirky things. It's because they bring attention to them in the first place. Now that people know who they are, they can find out more about them. Mm -hmm. like, it's the same shit. The problem is a lot of artists are they're basically just blaming the fact that for whatever reason, their music doesn't resonate with the people who came in through those other routes, or for some reason, what you did, the way you react is so funny and hilarious, and you're so gifted in that area, your music might be good, it's just not as great as that. And so I think people still stay gym, with you on that side. You just touched on another gem. Sometimes you might do a little campaign behind a song just to come to the conclusion that, man, this wasn't the right song to pick. This wasn't, I mean, sometimes the, the market is always going to tell you if your product is dope or not, all the, every time. So sometimes you might have to, you might have to spend some money behind a song just to find out, okay, the people are not fucking with this song, just point blank. I got to choose another single. Yeah. I mean, think about Joe Budden. Joe Budden is killing this podcast game right quick, right now, right? Mm -hmm. But just because I heard Joe Budden as a podcaster, a talk show personality, just because I discovered him that way first, it's not the truth, but like I discovered him that way first, mm -hmm. is that what's going to prevent me from liking his music? Like, me personally, I never listened to Joe Budden's music like that. I didn't rock, that's not my style of music, but yeah. he's gifted over here as a personality, and I love him as a personality. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people you attract on one side, they just aren't attracted to the other side because it's a different like, you know, it it reveals a different side of you, mm -hmm. and so, but it doesn't mean that it's not working. You're just getting something like it's just not working how you want it to work. Yeah, and I know that's like a weird thing, and it sounds like like it, it sounds like some general shit. But think think about it this way, right? Joe Budden was a rapper for shit. Let's say 15 years, mm -hmm. like just that. Like that was his career. His career was only but so big. Went through label systems, had a hit. All that stuff, mm -hmm. right? But it wasn't what it is right now as a personality. And the trajectory, yeah. his ceiling is so much higher from what he's doing. So mm -hmm. sometimes the other thing is not preventing you from being successful in another area. It's just that you have a higher, higher ceiling in one area than you do the other because 
for whatever reason, your talent doesn't resonate to that maybe as many people, right? Like, mm-hmm. I got other shit that I could talk about on YouTube, mm-hmm. like, that I love to do or yeah. that I think about that mm-hmm. might not have 10,000 subscribers. But I talk about marketing for artists specifically and things like that with their music. All right, I'm around 50, but I could talk more about some gossip shit that and get hundreds of thousands of subscribers uh, yeah. on a, at a lot quicker pace. Mm-hmm. I talk about that, you know, like, but that's not something that I want to do a page on. Yeah. But if that was a genuine interest of mine that I wanted to do, like, it's really just what are you picking and choosing? Sometimes success looks like it looks different in different categories. So don't be afraid to use one thing as a funnel to to come in on another side but just know until if you're dope at comedic skits if you're dope at reacting to videos whatever it is Mm -hmm. you'll get some attention to your music but if that music isn't going to get that full force and blow up until you really get one like cardi b like people act like cardi b just blew up off of uh bodak yellow Nah. She's been dropping music for a couple years, nah. man, and I've been hearing it. And I'm like, oh, okay, she, that wasn't that bad. She got something, but it wasn't connecting. It wasn't connecting, and people just knew her as the talk show person or the, I'm not talk show, uh, loving hip hop chick, Instagram chick, funny that way. She was still popping in that other way, mm-hmm. and she didn't have a chance at music until she caught one. And when yeah. she caught one, she, she already like capitalized. Yeah. Hold on, got that. Exactly. People want, like, when they like you for one thing, they want you to be successful in that other thing, but they're not going to give it to you if you don't got it. Mm-hmm. Like, but they're going to root that, put it, uh, like, for you in, in spades if you do have it. Like, and once she caught one, she caught one. So it's that thing for you. Now you just got to keep this fan base active mm-hmm. until you catch one. Because a lot of people say, man, it's not working. I'm going to just stop doing comedy, cold turkey, and switch to all music because these people aren't converting at the pace that I want to. No, your music probably ain't, it ain't it yet. Yeah. Like, but keep that attention or you're going to lose everybody and start from mm-hmm. ground zero. I feel it. I feel it. All right. So we got some questions. Um, we got questions in the comments. I've got questions already loaded up. Um, I want to go ahead and touch into uh, some of these questions. So let's see. Um, This is a good question right here. All right. All right. How should a conscious artist market themselves? Very good. How should conscious artists market themselves? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Conscious is such a weird category because I I really, I don't even know what the hell conscious is half the time. Uh, You got some people that say they're conscious, like, but they're really thinking about J. Cole or Kendrick Ish. Then you got some people who are conscious and they are into incense and things like that. So I really need something like more specific. You know what I mean? Like I when you I say conscious, man. but I I man, because like Kendrick giving himself, he he got a song where he said, "Don't call me." The what he said, the critics are calling me conscious, but every shooter in Compton be calling me, uh, every shooter be calling me Compton. Though. like he he himself basically said, like, "Don't I don't like that term." But I basically exactly I was asking was exactly an artist that focuses more on the uh, the content of their song, like what they're saying in their songs, should market themselves, and I I think that's a fair question to ask. If that's if that's what you're saying, like, all right, but let's let's go back to the conscious thing for one second, though. If you're calling yourself a conscious artist, and that's the way you think of yourself, how do you market yourself at a con- as a conscious artist? Mm-hmm. You're immediately losing because you're you're devaluing whatever your actual content is, and mm-hmm. which is what this second question that you ask is based on. So not conscious because nobody knows what that is anyway. What the hell do you talk about? Mm-hmm. Now, now that you know what you talk about. Do you talk about, I don't know, the African diaspora? Or do you talk about police getting killed or whatever? Like, what, like whatever you talk about, now that you know what you talk about, now market that thing to people who want to hear that conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, it's somewhat of an advantage in today's, um, like, social media era for an artist to have something to say in that particular category. Because now you got media outlets like creating your own YouTube show or page Right where you can talk, have those types of conversations, and mm-hmm. just talk about it. And then when they hear your music, now they know that it's parallel. Right? You, you speak on conscious shit. You talk so you can use in the same way the SEO someone uses, like how to build a fan base because it's going to pop up, or I do these type beats because it's going to pop up. Mm-hmm. You can use your conscious perspective, whatever that is, 
on certain topics that are going to bring you attention, right? And then let that be in parallel to whatever your musical perspective is. So now they come in, you get fans of who you are. Like that's what Lauren Hill did a great job as, right? Mm -hmm. She, her music, it, it spoke and, and, and it resonated with people who were conscious and, you know, quote unquote. But when she did interviews, she was super deep and talking that stuff as well. Now, today, you just might have to flip it sometimes and talk that stuff in a more conversational setting, a podcast, mm -hmm. collaborative interviews, all that stuff, and touch on these like controversial topics, whatever these topics are that are going to bring you attention. And then flip that into your music. And just remember, it's a marketing funnel. So by nature, initially, people, less people are going to be interested in what you're drawing to than the people at the top of the funnel, this initial thing that they discover you for. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged by that. That's just a part of the process until you build more and more with your fan base. But that's definitely something that conscious artists can do. Again, not conscious, whatever your content is. And once you know the shit that you talk about, now, where where is that stuff that you talk about relevant? To who is that relevant to? I think it's a pro and a con. Um, pretty much everybody uses the same two artists when they when you talk about this general category. They talk about Cole and Kendrick. That's kind of like just the, you. So you kind of I've heard a lot of people complain about saying that like, oh, as soon as I came with this, people was comparing me to Cole. People. So I think the con of it is that you have to really you might have to you might have to focus on how you're going to differentiate yourself from the biggest quote-unquote conscious artist or whatever you want to call it but if you do have your own sound in that realm i think it's actually an advantage because even for example let's say you're a lyricist so you you focus you you spend a lot of time focusing on your bars your what what you saying not what it's in a bar like jd kid said i think lyric videos will work way better for artists like that than a club artist if you're a artist that's not talking about anything i think a lyric video won't work as well for you like i don't think that if cardi b before if cardi b did a lyric video to her uh to about that yellow i don't think it would have been received as well out the gate as j cole uh just any any one of j cole song where he's talking about a lot of things because those were Words sometimes go over people's heads, right? Like when you're a lyricist, a lot of times your problem is that your words, your, what you're talking about is going to go over people's head. But when you put it in a lyric video where somebody's actually typing it out and they're making it look high quality, you, you can't ignore it. You literally can't ignore what they're saying because the words are coming up word for word. So I think that if you're a lyricist or you're talking about things that will connect to a certain type of audience, then um definitely take advantage of lyric videos because... I don't see as many underground artists doing that. Uh, let's try to get another question. Yeah, yeah. Not, just, just, not just lyric videos, man. I think what you're touching on is just the fact that even visually, artistically, you should be focusing on what you pe want people to focus on. So if you want people to focus on your words, all right, things like lyric videos. But, like, hey, you can, put, you can use your captions, right? Mm -hmm. A lot more strategically than someone who's not focused on their lyrics, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's all the like your captions in your videos. Wherever you have an opportunity to showcase lyrics, do it artistic and then do it artistically. Don't just write it down and be lazy about it. But like at the end of the day, when it comes down to being, you know what? All right, there's one thing with conscious artists. One of the biggest things when you talk about being compared to J. Cole, Kendrick, a lot of these same people again and again. The problem is a lot of these rappers rap on the same type beats. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to sound the same to people. If you are talking about content or you're rapping at a certain pace and it's mm -hmm. on the same type of beat that that person would, so sometimes you have to put yourself in a different environment mm -hmm. so you can do some different shit or people will hear you differently. So that might be a different production that's not typical for a conscious artist. Okay, this is a good question because it actually kind of lead me into my next point. Um, dang, this time went by fast, man. <laughs> this time going yeah, by. What time is it? It's already seven fifty-two. Like we was only planning on doing. Okay, this. yeah, it did. that's fast. Let's go ahead and try to get through some of these questions. But I appreciate, bro. First and foremost, before we even get into that, bro, I salute to you, bro, and I appreciate you coming, you know, taking the time to come out here and 
and share some of this value. So this question is, how do you identify your audience? How do you identify your audience? How do you identify your audience? Okay. I uh, uh, When I see Calvin Coolidge ask if I still do consultations, yes, I do from time to time. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy, but if you DM me, I, I mean, well, actually email me at brandmanshine at gmail.com. If I happen to have time, I'll try to squeeze some um, in. But I can't say I'm completely open, but I'll take here, one here and there. Um, as far as how you identify your audience. Can I touch on a real quick? First, you have to know. Before you drop them. What'd you say? Now, can I touch on a real quick before you drop that? Yeah. I, I don't know exactly what he meant by this question, because there's a couple of different ways you could interpret this question. But I, I think he's saying, like, how do you get to know exactly what your audience is? And honestly, I don't even a lot. Of, I've heard a lot of artists come against doing ads. But back to thinking like a marketer, when you're doing an ad and you're paying for promotion, even if the ad doesn't do well, you didn't take a loss because you bought data. So think of it, I think that doing ads and looking at the data, whether it does good or not, is a good way to identify your audience. Because if you see that this certain target market, this age, this demographic, this location didn't react well to your ad, then you know that that specific audience might not be rocking with your music. It's time to switch up, try a different audience. But if you do an ad and you see the people that are this age in this city that like these hobbies are responding well to my ad, then that lets you know, okay, you're getting a little bit warmer as to, you know, put in as basically identifying what audience is good for you. So I feel like doing ads and kind of just interpreting the data is a good way to identify your audience. No, that's a good quick and dirty solution for that, man. I think what you're alluding to is really just the fact that a lot of times you have to be willing to learn, mm -hmm. right? And that's all it is when it comes to marketing. You're forever going to be figuring out what's a better target for you. When you without running ads, without getting something out there to have people react to, you still don't know. So you need to do. You, I, I do say do ads. Um, I've, I've used that before. Um, just with random shit in general. You run ads, like you said. You see who reacts to it. How to, how the reaction. Oh, that's a quick and dirty way without you having to get posted on some people's stuff. Once you figure out what's not good for you, what's not going to work, that's going to lead you to say, okay, maybe I should find these pages to get placements on that kind of fit this category, fit this field. If your stuff isn't obvious, like now getting outside of like the literal straight data driven route, because to me, that's the best route that um in terms of like just run some ads, mm -hmm. get shit posted, see how people react. The other thing is thinking about, one, the type of music that you're making, what artist sounds like that, who are in those categories, right? That's that's mm -hmm. one route. But then also, what are these other interests that you have mm -hmm. and that you, feel, that you feel like people who listen to your type of music would actually care about? So a lot of times, that's going to lean on your content if you're talking about something. Right? Are you alluding to skateboarding? So maybe skateboarding is my like people who are in, in, into skateboarding might like what you mm -hmm. what you got going on. Like, do you vape? Do you talk about going through the malls? Or like, are you talking about weed? Are you talking about basketball a little bit? Like some of those things. That's going to be your initial audience. So when would you listen to your music? Would you listen to your music when you're working out? Why right? you have to ask yourself those questions? And a lot of times it starts with what are you actually talking about? Those subjects. Break down the things that you talk about into subjects and then figure out who like who resonates with those subjects. Like gossip. If you talk about some gossip type shit or some celebrity driven shit, oh I need to go mess with Shade Room and things like that. Right? Or if I'm talking about love, mm. all right, where do people who usually is interested in love type music? A lot of times, that's women, right? Okay, where do women like? You have to break down your content into that's what like, it that's kind of what like it back, represents like outside back, of you. Like that reverse engineering, I think that's what they call it. You got, I think, like from where would the people be at? What would they be listening to? What would they? What are they going through? And then kind of reorganizing it to make sure that your music is in those places, going getting to those people. 
100 percent is it's all reverse engineering i think the biggest trouble that that's the reason he asked the question is just that fact outside of like using like I said, those data-driven met methods is artists have a hard time separating themselves, as a lot of people separating themselves from the art itself, right? Mm -hmm. The product itself. But that's what you have to remember. You're trying to think about who is my niche? Who mm -hmm. am I going to relate to? Who's going to like me and be my fan? No. Who's going to be a fan of this music? Yeah. And when you think of when you separate it and think of it as a product. Now you have to say, once again, you're going to dig into what is the music I make about. Like, what are these what are these subjects in it? And the same way you would do if exactly. you had some dishwashing liquid, right? It's just a separate product. Okay, people who need to wash dishes. What are people who are usually washing dishes? Is it a housewife situation? Blah, blah, blah. It's hey, the they, about to off. they about to kick us off, but I'm going to come back. You said you're about to play. They had kicked us out. Uh, we, dang, you're probably <laughs> Instagram dirty for that, man. We weren't even on there a full hour. That was just about 55 minutes. All right, there it go. Okay, so one hour limit on the live. So let's I, give it a few more minutes. Yeah, I didn't know they had a, uh, I thought we had at least like five more minutes on there since we started at seven, but I guess they got an hour limit on the videos. So, um. Hey, so, well, now we know. You, man. What are you about to do? You about to read people's questions? Well, everybody's gone was, now, so you I was, can get the question. I was planning on doing an hour, man. We can't, can't give them too, too much at once, but uh, I'll, let's hear one more question before we get up out of here. Um, One more question. Let's go. One more question before we get out of here. Um, okay, this is this is this is a good question. All right, how to promote yourself and your music just the right amount without overdoing it? Let's uh, first approach. Is there a such thing as overdoing it? Um, It's hard for me to think about an overdoing. Overdoing it is a personal thing, really. Mm -hmm. So in terms of growing your fan base, no. But in terms of, oh, how much do I want to manage? Like, how famous do I want to be? That's more the overdoing it or not. Outside of that, not much overdoing it. As far as like, oh, am I oversaturating the market, making people tired of me? Eh. Like, when you get to, if you, if you happen to cross that line, go over that fence, you'll know. But most people are very, very far away from that. So I don't even want to think about that. Now, what most people have to think about and be more familiar with is you talking about you versus others talking about you. And in the same way we alluded to earlier in this conversation, you can manufacture other people talking about you. And a lot of these, these mysterious artists that you know of that are still very popular, you say, oh, yeah, they don't really talk much. They don't really do much. But they still have people hired that are talking about them or creating information about them, right? I could either, on my page, five times a day, say, yo, yo, follow Brand Man Sean. I'm awesome. Listen to my shit. Mm -hmm. Like, check out my content or check out my songs. Or instead of doing that five times a day, maybe I just do it one time a day. And then I have four other people do it on their pages, right? And now it's become, is that. And other people are talking about me. It doesn't feel like promotion, right? Mm -hmm. So that makes all the difference in the world, whether just conversation or are you still promoted? So I would focus, promote, 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 cool. But then when you feel like you're getting to some threshold where your fan base has heard enough who's already following you, Mm -hmm. Or you just it's not working no more for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Now you need to start focusing again on getting other people to talk about you. Yeah, there's something manufactured called, or not. There's there, there's something called ad fatigue where you can you can over promote something to the point where like the audience isn't really feeling it no more. They've seen it enough. Um, the I, to even the ad uh, fatigue. I, I did want to touch on one more thing before we dig it out of here. Um, remarketing. 
in your experience promoting artists, have you used retargeting and have you seen a difference in the response that you got putting a ad in front of people that already have seen this artist versus just a brand new yeah. ad to a brand new audience? Yeah. First, I want to address ad fatigue. Ad fatigue, most of the times, is due to laziness. Mm -hmm. I promote the hell out of shit a lot of times where maybe there's a there's a fatigue point. Everybody gets fatigued. Humans get fatigued, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you can move the goalpost another thousand yards down if you don't get lazy with your shit. Most people are having ad fatigue when they're talking about one fucking ad, right? They're not doing no you, split testing. Right. But, and it's not even just the split testing. It's changing the content. It doesn't mean you're done and they don't want to see you no more. I've seen that flyer 50 times, right? Like that was how I built my festival concept because sometimes it would be a flyer, but sometimes it would be a meme and it wouldn't even discuss the festival, but the festival logo will be on the meme. So they still see the festival. Sometimes it'll be a funny video. Sometimes I'm promoting an artist who might be at the festivals, but I'm like all, but I'm promoting the content. So I'm entertaining and I'm, and it's because I'm entertaining and thinking that way first, I sometimes, like, I don't always have to be the center of the attention. Sometimes I'm facilitating the attention. I'm facilitating the entertainment versus being the entertainer. And that allows me to be in, pe in front of in people's faces way more times than just pushing the same shit over and over again. They're like, yo, do better. I've seen this before. I've seen you. Hey, like, baby, you, you wear that every day. Can you change your hair sometimes? Can you change your nails? Like, yeah, yeah. you wear that same outfit every day. Like, that's what that is. Now, when we talk about the remarketing, 100%. Re retargeting. Retargeting. Yeah, retargeting, remarketing, like whatever you want to call it, it's going to have a higher um, click-through rate, reaction rate, almost always. Because basically, you, you are sending, you're putting shit back in front of people who have already said they're interested in you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that simple for people who aren't familiar with the concept. Like, when you go to a Home Depot website, and then next thing you know, you see power tools Mm -hmm. in the end next to you, right? But, it, you know, when we get more specific, oh, you go look for a power tool, and now they're showing you power tools, or you look for a hammer, look at a hammer page, and now they're showing you hammers, not mm -hmm. just any random stuff, right? That's So because of that, people are going to react better. I've, I've used it multiple ways, not just artists, and it always has a better result um, from my experience. Now, of course, there's not any chance that it does. Of course, there's chances that you can somehow do a bad campaign and doesn't get uh, better results. But I think that'll really, go back to the ad being good or not, though, honestly. Right, exactly. It's, it's going to be more of that. The brilliance that I love about remarketing is now that you are, you've already established people who are interested in it, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes cheaper. Even if mm -hmm. the click the click through might be. 25% more, but it's cheaper mm -hmm. because overall, you're not going to be marketing to a lot of people who aren't interested, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, if I have a budget for $100 over this five days, mm -hmm. but I'm only be marketing based on people who visited my website over the last 30 days, mm -hmm. that might only, I might only take $20 of that budget. Like if the, the software is not going to keep promoting just to get to a hundred dollars like a regular campaign would. Mm -hmm. It'll say, hey, we hit everybody. That that so like is no point. Like we're done. Mm -hmm. So you save money too. Like so it, like whatever your remarketing budget is, sometimes you you're gonna hit it, sometimes you're not gonna hit it. But remarketing is the best thing for branding. I might not be selling you shit this time. I might want you to I might I might get signed, let's just say this. You can switch, I got up, signed. switch up the call to action. I just want you to see I got, I don't even, you don't even, I don't even want you to click necessarily. I just want you to see that I got signed. I'm, I'm now I'm branding to people who show interest. I want you to see I had this show. You don't even click necessarily. You just see that this thing happened to me and you say, oh shit, take note. Oh shit, brand man, like he doing shit. Like somebody fucking with him out there. You know what I mean? And then once in a while you come back, okay, this is something I want them to click on. Like there's different um measurables like it's not always wanting somebody to click react and get views and those are the nuances that kind of they they separate you know the experts from someone who just thinks oh i didn't get a lot of views off of this video it failed you gotta understand that got you
Well, man, I really appreciate you for coming on here tonight, man. You definitely dropped, like, dropped some jams. Um, I, I think everybody, for the most, we, we couldn't even get through all the questions, <laughs> for real, man. That time yep. went by, but um, I appreciate it, for real, man. We got to wrap it up, get out of here. Uh, it's been Marketing on Monday. Uh, again, y'all go tap in with bro Brand Man Sean on YouTube, and um, he's doing this basically every every video on his page, man. So, um, yeah, bro, we finna get up out of here, but I appreciate you once again, man. Bet, bet, everybody who who is still in this, still tuned in, I appreciate you guys for taking the time to educate yourself yourselves and just to listen to me. You know what I mean? Hopefully, I'm bringing you value in whatever I said, and yeah, I just appreciate you guys' presence.